Hi! What you're looking at here on the oscilloscope are the waveforms from the test output and the guard terminal from the Agilent 1731B LCR meter. I have done a couple of videos explaining what guarding is and how it impacts measurements, and I'll provide links to those videos in the video description below. Of course, as the title of the video suggests, we're going to take another look at the Hentec 1033C LCR meter, but just wanted to do a quick explanation here on guarding so that the video is more self-contained. When you are measuring a high impedance component, say a high value resistor in the giga ohm range or a very small capacitor in the picofarads range, the cable leakage and stray capacitance can become an issue. And let's take a look at the issues at hand in either measurement scenarios. Say you are measuring a 1 gig resistor and the source voltage is at 1 volt. The current that is flowing through the resistor is thus at precisely 1 nanoamp. And by the way, this is extreme small amount of current and typically can only be measured reliably by an electrometer. In this case, any leakage along the current path of the cable would essentially manifest as a parasitic resistor. This parasitic resistor is in parallel to the device under test, which would obviously impact the accuracy of the measurement. In a 10 picoamp leakage through this parasitic resistor, which is definitely possible, would affect your measurement accuracy by 10%. That said, hobbyists typically don't encounter this kind of extreme large resistance measurements, but measuring small capacitance in picofarads range is actually quite common, especially if RF work is involved. In the case of measuring small capacitors, the culprit is the stray capacitance, and depends on the length of the cable and the stray capacitance can be quite large, and sometimes larger than the capacitance you are trying to measure, especially when you are measuring capacitance in the picofarads range. So let's see how guarding can solve these seemingly different issues. Ultimately, the parasitic resistance and capacitance are the result of unwanted current flow into the circuit ground from the test terminal. So if we can remove the unwanted current flow, we would essentially have removed the parasitic resistance and capacitance. Since no current means infinite resistance, no charging and discharging, which contributes to these stray capacitance. Guarding is typically implemented using a coax or a triax cable with a shielding surrounding the inner conductor driven at the same potential as the signal carrying conductor, often via a voltage follower. For sensitive measurements, a triax cable is used as the outer shielding also provides additional EMI suppression. For illustration purposes though, I am just going to show you the configuration with a coax. Now hopefully this is uh, obvious now, as far as the inner conductor is concerned, there is no current flowing between the conductor itself and the active driven shielding, which is the guard outside. Since they are at the same potential and output of the voltage follower is the same as the input to the voltage follower. Now the guard may well leak current into the outer shielding in the triax cable scenario or leak current into the ground in this uh, coax cable scenario but it does not affect the measurement as the current is sourced by the voltage follower and is not seen by the signal carrying conductor in the middle here. This, in effect, gets rid of the leakage resistance and capacitance of the coax cable. Now that was really a long-winded introduction, but now you understand what the guard terminal is used for in an LCR meter and why it is important. Let's take a look at the Hentec 1033C we reviewed a while ago. Now after that review, I was actually trying to do some measurement using the guard terminal and I noticed the results were not what I was looking for. So I did the same measurements as I just showed you with my Agilent 1731B and it was quite puzzled. Let me show you here. Okay, now I have unplugged the leads from the Agilent 1731B and now I'm going to plug it into the Hentec LCR meter. Now, this cable here, which is the yellow probe, is actually channel one, so I'm going to plug it, this one into the measurement terminal, and the other one I'm going to plug into the guard. Now, of course, the signal is uh, not the same frequency as the Agilent 1731B, but that's fine. Let me just adjust it so it looks better here on the scope. So I'm going to plug in the guard terminal here. 
You see, for the main terminal, we have a sinusoidal wave just like we saw on the Agilent 1731B LCR meter. Although the waveform is not on and off, and you can see that it is continuous. But you also notice there's no signal coming from the guard terminal. So let me change the measurement range a little bit just to make sure that it's not dependent on the measurement range. And you can see that as I cycle through the measurement range, I don't see a waveform coming from the guard terminal either. So it appears that the guard terminal doesn't do anything at all on this meter. To be fair though, when you read through the product menu, you will only see the guard terminal mentioned a couple of times without any elaboration on how to use it. So this made me believe that maybe the guard terminal on this 1833C is not activated at all. I noticed this issue shortly after I did my initial review, but I wanted to give uh, Hantech some benefit of doubt, and uh, I was hoping Hantech would give me some explanation. I actually sent Hantech a couple of emails over the course of a month seeking some clarifications, but have not heard a word back. So if you have a Hantech LCR meter, I would be curious to see if you can detect anything out from the guard terminal at all. Leave a comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. I will catch up with you next time.